gonna, how are you gonna top that? You know, mm-hmm. what do you need to do to get to the next level. And so Washington, you know, he's just like the goat among goats, you know. Whenever you're on your way to the actual audition, make sure you're good. Make sure you're like calm, like don't be so nervous, like kind of just take a breath. I think when it comes to multiple auditions a day, you can sometimes prioritize it, like see which one you want the most. Besides two. Like there's a good side, there's a positive side and a negative side. Like my life story, I feel like it will be it may, it may inspire somebody. He's one of those people who like he doesn't have to try as hard. He tries hard, but it's like it, I think it just comes more natural for him. Um, as you know, I moved around a lot growing up. I was born in Connecticut, grew up in Texas, went to high school overseas in Singapore. Came back. I'm in the process of making a TikTok. I've had my friend, my girlfriend tell me, like, I need to be on my first lead role in a play. I remember I was like, not only the lead role, mm-hmm. I was the one to like the first line of the whole show. How you doing, man? It's always good to see you. <laughs> good, good. How you feeling this morning? It looks like every day you're looking more and more like 50 Cent. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing that my whole life, you know? What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to your favorite channel where you get to learn about leadership, communication, and networking. On this session today, we have a very special guest, a talented highly prolific. I like to refer to him as one of the most reliable human being on earth. Have you ever seen The Rock, everyone? You know, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and at some point in time when, during his career, when you turn on the TV, you see his face. When you go on the train station, you see The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. When you go on the radio, Dwayne Johnson, when you go on your cell phone, if it's an advert, now he's like the most followed human being, the most followed male on oh, in america not on planet earth i think it's here another yes those guests i'm having this morning don't be surprised when at some point you start seeing it all over the place because i can verify that he's even not much more hardworking he's just as hardworking as the rock doing johnson and i think the rock doing johnson is one of the most hardworking human being in the world so at this very point i'd like you all to welcome our special guest on today's segment, Spencer Dunn. What's up, Spencer? Hey, Dapo. I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing awesome. Like I said, um, when it comes to being the most reliable person, you're one of the human beings that I can really vouch for. And as I mentioned earlier on, The Rock Johnson, is also one of the most hardworking person in the world. And I even like the way he, he's not really my favorite actor, but he is someone that I just love his work ethics. I love his work mentality. Yeah. I like the way he, he, he carries himself and the way he takes his job seriously. Yeah. What do you think about the Rock Green Jensen in general? Is it someone that you really love the way he, performs as acting or mm-hmm. do you just because i remember we've had you on this show before and then you mentioned that one of your favorite actor is denzel washington yeah and now <laughs> i'm just saying the rock <laughs> just what do you think about him in general um i think the rock is like a really great guy you know he's somebody who is very much a people person you know he has like the look, sound, very charismatic, you know. He knows like how to present himself in any situation. 
whether it's on screen, off screen, behind the scenes, whatever the case is, you know, mm -hmm. I think he knows how to like be professional and like be somebody like relatable. You know? Yeah. Like, overall, he's just yeah. like a good businessman, you know. You know, he, knows, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, he's a. Uh, I was telling some guy, one friend of mine, that The Rock is one of the most. When it comes to marketing, he's so yeah. good at marketing stuff. Yeah. His view of him is either advertising a t shirt or some yeah. energy drink or his production company or he's telling one emotional story which he will eventually connect to Seven Box Production. I'm like, this exactly. is so good. <laughs> but let's bring it to you. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Tell us about how you, where you grew up from, where you're mm -hmm. from, where you grew up, and um, how how did Spencer Dune came into this person that we all beginning to love? <laughs> okay, well, we can just kind of start off with uh, my background a little um, to America, and New York specifically for college. And then now I'm living in New York City. So like, just from that, you can kind of get an idea of like my life experiences, like traveling around the world uh, during that time, meeting so many different types of people, cultures, had a big, it had a big influence on just my upbringing, you know? Mm -hmm. so I think through that, I've just met so many different types of people that where I'm very like adaptable to any situation, you know? And I'm not afraid to me be in new situations that I'm not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I think um, in a sense that jumps out in my acting career, because, you know, actor, you got to be playing all these different types of roles and yeah. personas, you know, mm -hmm. so to kind of have like a perspective on thousands of people I've met throughout my lifetime. Yeah. Like you can see how it connected, you know. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So, at some point, what was it a point of your life when you wanted to do something else other than acting? Yeah, I was actually an athlete before anything else. Um, okay. I grew up playing soccer and running track. Those are my two main things. Okay. <laughs> I remember, like, initially when I went to college, I wanted and whatnot, but then I think. At some point, I kind of made the decision where I was just like, you know, I don't think this is exactly what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't like fit my lifestyle anymore. Mm -hmm. I see it, you know. And um, I think during that time, I randomly, I remember this. I remember in high school, mm -hmm. I randomly took an acting class because somebody told me it was an easy A. You know, okay. like <laughs> you know, just the patient points. Mm -hmm. But after taking that class, I actually liked it. And my uh, teacher at the time was saying, like, he saw a promise in me. He even offered me a role in the short film. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I don't I don't act. Like, I'm an athlete. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything, you know? Mm -hmm. So recalling that memory, I'm like, all right, you know, let me try this acting thing. Like, let me just see what it's about, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just remember taking my first, like, actual um, class in college. Like, after that, I'm just like, okay, this could be, this could lead to something. You know, it really become something greater than what I imagined. You know? That's really interesting. Did you have one of this life epiphany, like this life changing moment that made you say, that made you confirm that, you know what? I Because a lot of people still think about, even, you know, especially when you're in your early 20s, people still yeah. think, I want to be an actor, and I want to be a banker, and I want to be an engineer. And for example, this guy in Game of Thrones, the short dude, the dwarf, yeah. he was like, when he got to like age 28, he made that firm decision that I will become a working actor. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to that point where you were like, you know what, I'm going to seal this decision, and henceforth, I'm going to become a working actor. No other side gigs, nothing, no working in some retail or engineering company. It's just acting. It doesn't matter. I just want to focus on my career. Did you have that, you know, that decisive moment as well in your life? Yes. Um, actually, my sophomore year of college, when I got my, my first lead role and added mm -hmm. like a monologue to open up the whole thing, you know? Mm -hmm. so, 
I'm like, oh my God, like I'm so nervous. Like I've never done this before. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, doing a play, it's more intimate during a film uh, compared to a film, mm -hmm. you know, cause there's people like right there, like with a lot of eyes on you and everything. Mm -hmm. So I remember like getting up there, doing it. I was holding a book too. Mm -hmm. My hands were shaking. <laughs> but literally once I got through it, I felt something. That's like you said, that moment, that's when that fire was lit in me. That's when I was, I knew I was like, okay, this is it. I have to do this. Like, forget everything else. Like, this is like all I'm going to focus on, you know? That's really interesting. So, when it comes to, and this is where we're going into the portion of, you know, you embodying a character. But before I even go in there, do you have something that makes you feel so emotional that when you think about it, it might be maybe during your childhood, it might be during your adulthood, that you just think about this thing and you're like, it just makes you go really into this emotional space, like this private emotional space and you think about it and you're like you know what this this is it and i just i want to do this because of this like i want to be the best of myself because of this situation i want to bring out the best in me um and i want you to take a moment to like connect it to you know embodying a character because when you are embodying a character as well you're also in a space because you have to like connect with the character. So yeah. do you have this emotional moment and also can you like connect it to maybe you embodying a character? Um, you know, I think when it comes to acting, you know, people kind of think if you want to, if you want to act sad, just think of a sad moment, you know, or an emotional moment in your life, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think for me, it's like a little of that, mm -hmm. but then like, I want to take in what the character is going through themselves, you know? So for example, if a character lost like his girlfriend, like died in his arms, mm -hmm. that's never happened to me personally. I may recall on like maybe a death of a loved one or somebody close to my life, but I don't want to use that full moment. I want to take in. I want to like become my character and really feel like what they're feeling, you know? Yeah. I think like the best way to go about that, it just really takes like time to get into the character. You know, you have to understand everything about it. You know, um, for example, whenever um, we worked on the call, mm -hmm. um, my character, Sam, I actually, I don't know if I told you this, I actually had a character journal of everything about them that wasn't written in the script or nothing. Hmm. Like how old he is, what's his favorite food, what he likes to do in his pastime. Like I really like to discover like what those character, what that character is, and mm -hmm. through that process, mm -hmm. it really helps you just step into them. You know, mm -hmm. and just, like feel everything they're feeling, think everything they're thinking. You know. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it, it's like there's a um, number of ways to do. It. Everybody has like like method acting where you're in character. Like you separate. broke the word out of my mouth. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about acting because I was I was gonna go there, but just tell, <laughs> tell me tell me something about it. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I don't think I'm like able to be in character twenty four seven mm -hmm. because I personally don't think like that's not good for your mind. You know, just mm -hmm. like being in that state of mind for a long period of time is it, it could do some damage mentally, you know, mm -hmm. but um, I respect it at the same time because that takes a lot because of the effort it takes on you, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I guess to an extent I do like have to like method act, like there'd be things in my daily routine. I might switch up a little, or if I'm playing like a character who might, not have many friends, I might be a little more antisocial with my friends, you know, just mm -hmm. because I really want to focus in on this character, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you do that, when you go into that space with your friend, do you still have people that are like, 
oh, what's what, what's going on with this dude? Or do you have some people that are like, you know what? Now they know you, they're like, okay, now he's in the space, let's give him some time. Mm-hmm. Or do you just like wake up from your bed in the house and you just start, you know, reciting dialogues and people are like, oh man, he's he's doing it again. <laughs> doing this again. <laughs> do, you, do you have moments like that? Or everyone's just like, okay, he's an actor, he's a professional, maybe he's just memorizing and people are just used to it now. I think it's more so people got used to it um, right now. Like, you know, I kind of just, it's sometimes like I tell them, I have to know, I'm like, listen, I'm in a role, I have this, so I'm going to be less involved in this function or things like that, you know? But most of the times I'm kind of just like doing what I need to do, you know? Mm-hmm. I kind of get up and go and people have questions, I'll tell them, but it's like, I'm just focused on me at that moment, you know? Yeah. What I need to do to achieve that goal the process that you go through when you from the moment you apply f- to go for an audition mm-hmm. and the process it takes in you preparing for audition you know before asking this question initially i was having it in mind to make a video on how to prepare for an audition mm-hmm. uh, and just put it out there on youtube for actors and young actors and people to see but then i was like no i know someone that has done this first hand and I was like no let me just bring this person in and let's hear from him okay so le- let's hear what what's the process you go through in applying for an audition and preparing for an audition and then you know just making up your mind for whether or not you get the role what's the process like for you I think um for me personally I like to look at the audition I think I was um, I was thinking about this earlier or the day before. Whenever I like go for an audition, whether it's like a small role, big role, whatever role it is, mm-hmm. always put your best foot forward. You know, you always want to present yourself in the best manner. So, for me, when I look at an audition, it has a monologue or something they want me to like read at the audition. I'm memorizing it. You know, no question. You know, if you want to be an actor, that's part of like your career. Mm-hmm. You get memorizing lines, you know. So like, even if it's an audition, if it's a small thing, that's practice to getting it in. You know, mm-hmm. studying the character breakdown, um, looking at what the story is about, how involved is your character, what the character plays, and uh, and how what the character plays in involvement with the other characters. You know. Um, sometimes they'll provide a script, sometimes they won't, but you have to be the one to like figure out that connection, you know, and take your best interpretation of it. So I would say whenever you're on your way to the actual audition, make sure you're good. Make sure you're like calm, like don't be so nervous, like kind of just take a breath, you know, and you just want to make sure you know your lines, mm-hmm. make sure they know your name, Mm -hmm. The smile on your face, Mm -hmm. it'll be fine, you know? The calm part. I feel like you're leaving so many things out, honestly, because the calm part. And I want you to tell us the story, because you remember when you came for the audition for the call, you told me, yeah, there was your tire went, you know, your tire bust got busted on the highway or something like that. And you came in and you were still composed okay you came in you had your line memorized you performed the monologue three times using three different emotional expression and you had your actors resuming you know you just came fully prepared so even though along the line it was a three hours driving right and you had this tire the flat the, the flat tire along the line a lot of people would have been like, you know what? Maybe God doesn't want me to do it. Then just go back home. Yeah. You know, but you still can't. But tell us this thing, please. Tell us this thing. Because I feel like it's more of a mindset yeah. than you just, oh, I'm an actor. Memorize your line. Just go for the audition. Make sure you look good. Make sure you smile. I feel like it's more of a mindset. It is. Which is, which might be unteachable. You just have to like, Get that click you spoke about mm-hmm. and but, but t- just tell us about it because i feel like some things involved that i want people to understand 
even if even if they can like fully manifest it yeah. i still want them to have this mental grasp of it so i guess i'm i'm, I'm actually going to start from the day before mm -hmm. i remember the day before i had a lot of things to do with running errands and whatnot and i think at some point i knew i had to like memorize the monologue for the audition the next day mm -hmm. it wasn't until maybe like like 10 11 p.m or something i finally got a chance to like all right i gotta memorize this you know even though i'm tired i have to i have to like take the time to memorize it, it took me like two hours to like memorize that whole like monologue you know mm -hmm. up late just like trying to like really get it down packed, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, next day, uh, to give reference as well uh, for the audience, I was living in Connecticut at the time, mm -hmm. New York, and I lived like at the very north of Connecticut. So I had to drive yes. like two, two, three hours. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I got up, got, uh, got ready. I actually uh, brought a suit to like, because that, that's what I imagined Sam would be wearing uh, for the thing. So I was like, I brought that, ready to go. Driving, driving, and I'm like memorizing my lines at the same time, like just kind of going over and over and over again, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, maybe like an hour out or something, boom, flat tire, out of nowhere. I'm just like, wow, okay. I'm like, okay, you know what? I got to find the closest auto shop. And I was like, let me just like call or text you guys as well to let you know that I'm still on the way, but I to inconvenience, you know? But I think like in my mind, I was just like, you know, I, I gotta get there. I gotta get there because I look at every role, again, no matter how big or small, it could really be life-changing because you never know who's involved, who's watching, who anything can come of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so my mindset is just like, don't stop, don't give up, you know, like do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. there, you know, I was willing to like leave my car there wherever I got flat tire wow. or a train or whatever, just to get there, you know? And like, when I got there, thank God my tire got fixed. And when I got there, I made sure to like go to the bathroom, made myself look professional again, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of like come back and calm myself so I can get in the right mindset to present myself to you. Mm -hmm. and, and that was that still is one of the most professional the most uh, the most amazing monologue being delivered like I wasn't expecting that you know I don't know if I told you before that I had someone in mind already and when you came and you delivered the monologue we, we had done like tons of audition before you came in and you remember Jace was beside me and while you were doing yeah. the first one the second one Jace was like he was like pinching me on the side I was like that's the guy that's the guy <laughs> I was like I, I, you know I, I have to maintain my professional office I was like it just was like that's it that's it you know uh, because <laughs> it was just exceptional you know you took it way serious and the fact that you had to go through all those things and still maintain your frame, your professional frame, and still deliver your best, I mm. still find that mind blowing. You know, I still find that because if someone else had told me, you know what, I'm going back to Connecticut because I, I don't think God wants this for me, I would have understand, you know, but you were like, you know what, this is what I want. This might be a life changing moment and I'm just going for it. And that's the mindset that I want people to just get from this. That's one, one thing I want them to hold on to, if anything, that once you get that flip in your mind and you're like, you know what, I'm going for this thing, a lot of other things might happen, but it's just your focused mind that will be like, you know what, let's just keep going. Now. One thing, I wanted to speak on that real quick. Okay. Like, um, one thing I wanted to say is it's also for me, I have the mindset where I'm just like, okay, if you're not gonna do it, somebody else is gonna do it better. You know, if you're not gonna like give it your all, somebody's gonna give it your all on your place, you know? So I'm the type of person where like, I don't wanna be beaten. I don't wanna be outworked by somebody, else, you know? It's just naturally competitive. 
Yeah, yeah, and that's that, and that's that's the athlete in me. Like, I don't, I don't want to lose. I don't want to. I don't like losing. You know, I don't guys, wanna... take note of this moment. You remember I said something about the Rock doing Jensen. The Rock is also very competitive. There was this video of him. I don't know if you've seen it before. It's a very popular video of him saying, um, "In life, he puts himself. He puts his back against the wall, and." Mm -hmm. Once his back is up against the wall, the only thing he thinks about is no going back, it's just going forward. And then yeah. he said something about the acting career when he was with the, with the, I think with the production company, and they asked him, what does he want? He said, he wants Will Smith's career. I think at that moment, Will Smith was the best actor, was the highest paid act, highest paid actor. And he said, I want Will Smith's career. And I want to do it bigger and better. Now, whether he's doing it bigger and better, I don't know. But I think he's doing great. He's doing amazing. I think at, at, as of last year, he was the highest paid actor. So mm -hmm. I just want you all, audience, to keep this in mind. Because we have one of the most competitive talents in the house. And do not be surprised when you see him out there just topping the chats top in the US box office and just doing amazing. And this is just one thing I want them to hold on to that. It's that competitive mindset. Some people don't like competition. Some people are just like, you know what, whatever they give me, that's fine. But I yeah. think competition brings out the best in you. It's just something about, you know what, it's two of us and it's one price. And it's either I get the price or this next counterpart gets the prize. And it makes you just want to push. I don't know if you've gone through this. I believe you've gone through it in track. When you're running, like if it, it could be like a hundred meter and there's someone beside yeah. you and you're running and the person is like, maybe like four inches ahead of you. And you're like, you know what? I have to beat this person. And at that yeah. moment, you don't think about any other thing you just think about the four inches you think about beating this person and crossing the finish line beside the person at that very moment that's all that matters to you yeah it's just the competition and i think at that moment you you bring in something that's just not usual in you you have to bring in that because winning winning is winning this is one of my favorite quotes from vin diesel in Fast and Furious. He said, winning is winning. Whether it's an inch or a mile, winning is winning. So that's, and that's what competition brings out. And that's what makes winning valuable because you want something. It makes, it makes the journey worthwhile to you. You know, so I, I really admire, I love people that are naturally competitive. I just, if there's one thing I want to create, it's just a space for healthy competition where people could compete for something and win something. And just because every time I see people compete, I just see people that would usually just sit down, just do something extra, you know. And this, there's a saying that the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is the word extra. The extra thing that you put into whatever the regular people, you know, are doing. How do you prepare yourself for multiple auditions in one day you have to memorize that monologue you have to memorize another monologue and you're not even sure if you get in the room but then you have to put your best into everything so how do you prepare yourself for something like that actually i actually did this yesterday i had three self-tape auditions uh yesterday so i think for me again it's just like you don't want to be at work you know, I don't want, I don't want to think like, oh, somebody else is up there doing four or five and you only have three and you can't like, you can't be like complaining like, oh, I have to all this memorize all these things. Like, no, 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 no. Get that out of your mind, you know, get it out. And you just got to take it a step at a time. Mm -hmm. you know, I think when it comes to multiple auditions a day, you can sometimes prioritize it like see which one you want the most, mm. most a little more time on it mm -hmm. or or um 
if there's one that like you don't really like feel like that's gonna be it but you still want to submit yourself for it i still put in the same effort you yeah. know i still put in that same effort but for me some people may get overwhelmed because like you said there's going to be a lot of memorizing and a lot of like uh things to uh, uh, aspects to that i feel like as an actor memorizing shouldn't scare you you know like remember like you shouldn't be afraid of like memorizing all these lines, you know, because again, that comes with the job, it comes with the territory. Mm -hmm. Look at it as practice. Look at it as sharpening your craft. Every audition is sharpening your craft, you know? True. I like that. Every audition is sharpening your craft. So is there something you look for in, before we go into script, is there something you look for in a monologue that you're like, I think I like this dialogue. I think I like the setting. I think I can imagine what this space looks like. And then you create your own type of, you know, using your imagination. I feel like you actors, you guys make use of your imagination a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing a lot of people don't use. I think, was it Disney? Well, Disney, they say you can use your imagination. Or oh, when he went for something, they were like, you don't have enough imagination. And then he created Disney and all the stuff so is there something that you look for in a monologue before we even go into scripts is there something you look for in a monologue that's like wow i like this i like the way he said this yeah uh, i can imagine he's wearing this or i can imagine this area looks like this is there something you look for in a monologue that helps you narrow down which audition to go for or which project to, to I think um, that's easy. It's just like the story, like whether you like the story overall or not, you know, and like if I just see a monologue, it comes down to the writing of it, you know, like are they just saying a monologue, just saying a monologue or are they talking about something deeper, like referring or referring to something? You know, I think just a lot of things uh, may peak pique my interest but for the most part it's just like the story itself and like what they're talking about now when it comes to acting how do you because i've seen i've seen a lot of your acting mm -hmm. and the energy level is just always high one and they're always the same and then i remember you saying oh i'm going on set now and then I'm going on audition. And on the same day, you're having all those projects. So how do you prepare yourself for like a shoot day, for example? How do you prepare yourself in order to deliver all this you know, high quality performance that you deliver? You just go there and have fun. You know, you gotta like be really in the moment for it all. I'd say um, don't think so much about things that can go wrong or don't think about like just like the negative possibilities you know you gotta like go on set and just do what you gotta do you know because again that's what you're there for but I think I'm somebody who really like lives in the moment very much you know I'm somebody who takes in everything and rolls with it you know I, I enjoy I enjoy being on set a lot you know Amen. <laughs> okay so when it comes to working with a director what do you look for um somebody i guess first of all somebody who knows what they're doing um but also just somebody you feel like you can work with in terms of just like am i able to get along with this person or like am i able to go to this person and talk about something that he may find difficult you know am i able to uh approach them and like be like hey like i don't really like how my character does this and i'm able to do like things like that you know i think somebody who has like an open mind and isn't afraid to be critiqued and like vice versa you know i think it just comes down to the personality of it all when it comes to the the film industry who or when it comes to actors in the in the film industry who inspire you who inspires you most um obviously like you said earlier denzel washington you know he's just like the goat among goats you know um but obviously i love uh, michael b jordan 
uh, Johnny Depp, Leonardo. There's like just a bunch of guys and girls out there too that I just really love. Um, I recently just finished watching the Peaky Blinders. So hey, Cillian Murphy as like he's like he's up there for me right it's now. The goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I literally I just think about the smoking though, because at some point it's like <laughs> I'm like I'm smoking on the screen. I'm like, what the what's going on here? <laughs> uh, that's like that is funny because like I want I want to uh play a character that like smokes or like smokes often and things like hey, that. Be because fine. I don't I, I I don't smoke cigarettes or whatnot, so I feel like it'll be cool to like do that, portray it through somebody else. Like. By the time you get to the sixth season, your eyes are going to turn red. You're going to be like, <laughs> uh, I'm in the pack. Are we smoking? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Picky Blind Eye is an amazing TV show. Amazing. Uh, the first season wasn't wasn't the best. It, I feel like it was very slow at the beginning, but along the line. It started picking up, and then all of a sudden, it just became one of the best TV shows that yeah. I've ever seen. I think um, the later, um, I think it was season four or something, like when they were like messing with the Italians. That, that was my uh, favorite one, personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, a lot of stakes to it. So I was like, okay, right, this is yeah. So, what impact would you like to have on the film industry? Um, I want to inspire, you know, um, inspire through my craft, inspire through like what I tell people, just like my actions, you know, I don't want nobody to live their life thinking like they can't do this or they can't do that. In reality, you can do anything, you know, like, yeah, and any, anything at any time in your life. Like, I don't, I don't think age should limit you either you know if you really want something just go after it you know mm -hmm. out like how you're gonna get it and go just go after it you know and i think yeah. just like showing like my life story i feel like it will be it may, it may inspire somebody i don't know so it's great when you talked about age some images just popped up in my head Mm -hmm. Someone like uh, some or oh, Jackson, Morgan Freeman, yep. you know those those are actors that they they got known, you know, at a very later stage. Yeah. But then when you start focusing on them, you realize that they've been acting for years. Yeah, like yeah. you see their faces, I'm like, whoa, man! And then they just started, you know, getting into the mainstream. Which means, just like you said, there is no limit to what you can achieve. Mm -hmm. No stopping. Um, age is just a number in this industry. Yeah. Um, as long as you put your mind into it and you just make that decisive decision that, you know what, acting is all I want to do and you just keep pursuing it. Um, beyond the sky is the limit. Beyond yeah. the sky is the limit. You know. What other stuff do you do other than acting? um i'm actually um learning how to get into uh web graphic design actually um you know like uh, just designing like websites and things like that mm -hmm. um i also like enjoy so when i do self tapes um sometimes i gotta like edit it and like go on iMovie and whatnot mm -hmm. i actually just took a trip to miami recently and i vlogged it Mm -hmm. so kind of making a whole little uh video out of that you know yeah I'm, I'm like i'm trying to like find new outlets to like still be creative and like mm -hmm. done before for myself mm -hmm. I, and i do that for other people as well you know i'm wow. thinking of you know drug dwayne johnson just like we spoke about him doing everything marketing and this and that mm -hmm. now imagine doing drug johnson doing web design as well you yeah, know? <laughs> you will be like the different one because you're not just being out there and marketing now. You could actually sit down and do web design, video editing, which is way beyond. Uh, and that's why I said beyond the sky is your limit because yeah, like that, you know. Uh, 
um, you can't just stay in one place. You you gotta be able to, you know, increase your skills, increase your abilities. Um, even if it's just even for example, we film students, film creators. It's always advisable for people like us to not just focus on because like i said i just want to be a writer and i just want to be a director but you can't just focus on becoming a writer and a director alone especially if you are just kicking off your career yeah you have to be able to do everything you have to be able to work in sound you have to be able to work in camera you have to be able yeah. to work in costume you have to be able to do all those things yeah in order to at some point be able to say okay even though you're the director you know about all these things and when people come you can tell them you know what i have an expectation not just because i have an expectation it's because i've actually done it before yeah and it's just like you know i learned i learned early on that in my career like don't just let this be your, your life don't just like let acting be your life because People like have lives. Not everybody just doing one thing their whole lives. They have other hobbies. They have other experiences. You know, mm -hmm. and if you want to portray real people like uh, what people are like. Mm -hmm. You got like also embody that as well. You know, don't just like let it be your and uh, one all be all. You know, like go live your life. Go see what else is out there too. You know, that is really interesting. I was thinking about. Christopher Nolan. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with his films? Yeah, uh, last one I watched was Tenet, actually. Tenet, do you love Tenet? Yeah, I actually loved it, yeah. I enjoyed the storyline a lot, and just from the acting to the actual um, plot of it all, and the twists, and mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen it? I haven't seen it, but I read a lot about it. Yeah. And Christopher Nolan is someone that I really have come to admire over the years. But like I said, I, I listen to both sides. I listen to those that love him, those that criticize him. Yeah. And um, when it comes to Christopher Nolan, I, like I said, is someone that I really admire. I admire his work. I want to, I want to go in his route when it comes to sci-fi. Uh, yeah because he's a writer, he's a director. And like I said before, you know, you got to work in every department. He, there's a specific interview where he said something like that, that he has worked in every department. And the reason why I asked you was because he's one of the directors that I admire the most. Do you have like your own preference when it comes to acting? Like, do you, would you rather do like a romance movie a sci-fi movie or thriller do you have like a preference or you just you just want to um you just want to try a lot of things and just maybe along the line figure things out well first of all i want to do it all i want to do all of that um i want to be somebody versatile you know i don't want to like be um stuck in like one genre only and kind of just seen as like he's only this type of actor like i don't want to you know i don't want i just don't want to be like stuck in that box but if i had to choose i would choose something like drama or something like with like a serious tone to it you know because i feel like i like that challenge of getting characters who who embody that tone because me, Spencer, like I'm a happy go lucky person who's always like, I feel like positive and always like trying to have good vibes around me and whatnot. I wanna like kind of play the opposite of me because I feel like that'll be more of a challenge for myself and I wanna push myself to those limits. Mm -hmm. you know? but, have you uh, ever, sorry to cut you off, have you ever acted in a role and after the role, it kind of changed you and you're like hmm i feel like i'm changed because of this role i learned yeah i'd say like i learned a lot about myself through the characters i play you know i always that's i literally always encourage people like especially when i was back in college mm -hmm. um like, you'll take an acting class you know it's mostly participation points to pass but like 
you never know you might learn something about yourself because that's what happened to me so mm -hmm. if you take your because like acting you're taking yourself out of your comfort zone you know and nobody wants to leave the comfort zone mm -hmm. but through that you can grow you can literally grow by taking yourself out of that and just learning these new things about yourself and the things mm -hmm. that people are doing you know mm -hmm. Have you seen films like Rush Hour, Jeff Chen and Chris Tucker? Yeah, I agree. Have you seen, um, what do you think about, okay, have you seen The Rock and Kevin Hart, Jumanji, oh, CIA? What's the, yeah, there was a CIA one, CIA one called? CIA, yeah, yeah Jumanji. Uh, now, okay, my question now is, we've had films with, you know, two like main actors and then you have this dude and then you have this other dude and they both like kind of make it all work it could be funny it could be action it could be this do you have someone in mind that you would like to work with that when you see something like when you see a film like for example like jumanji or when you see a film like rush hour do you ever think man i'd like to work with someone on this kind of to create something like this like an epic even like an epic funny action or thriller movie is this someone that you have um a good question i never really uh, thought about it thought about that <laughs> i think um obviously hmm. it could be a female actor as well um i'm trying to remember the guy's name you watch snowfall no he was in um, that movie with Anthony Mackie recently. Um, I think his name is Damien. I'm gonna tell you right now. His name is yeah, Damson Idris. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know him. Like you look look him let up. Me, let me see. I'll just put the image somewhere on it. Yeah. Damn some Idris. Um, I actually just started watching Snowfall as well. I just finished season one. He's somebody I would love to like act with. Yes, in it. You've seen him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, he's somebody I could see myself doing like yes, yes, him. He's somebody I could see um like doing one of those like duo movies with like you said rush shower or like central intelligence with the rock and kevin hart like those type of things mm -hmm. but um fun fact one person i would love to act with is um drake because you oh, know okay. drake drake started out as an actor and, really? <laughs> and he said before like he'll think he'll go back to it eventually like you know because right now he's obviously the top of like the the yeah. music and whatnot I'm waiting for him to come back. I'm waiting for him to come back to the street, man. <laughs> you know, Drake is one of those music <laughs> rappers that can do no wrong in my face. Like, mm -hmm. if someone tells me, Drake did this, I'm like, I don't care. Drake has what he's, he's such a hardworking rapper. You know, right from the beginning, right from the start, when he dropped the okay. album up to the very moment. Um, I have a lot of respect for Drake. Like, he's like, I don't listen to hip hop. I don't listen to music. Mm -hmm. But I still listen to Drake. I still yeah. find time to like listen to his full album. That's how much I have a lot of respect for his work. Um, and I would love to see you work with Drake. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I, know what's going to happen. <laughs> I, oh, I literally always tell people that whenever he comes back to acting, like, hopefully, like, I'm. I have more of a name to myself by then, so like we can connect or something because like, wow. yeah. <laughs> like, like I because like you see if you like like he still does like little skits even his in his music videos and like other stuff. I'm just mm -hmm. like oh, this dude like it's funny. Like he knows how to act still. Yeah, yeah. He he does a lot of things. He he's very versatile, very creative. Yeah. <laughs> so when you go out and people tell you, bro, you look like 50 cents. What's your first reaction? <laughs> I laugh. I literally laugh because like I've heard it most of my life, especially like when my hair was um, shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's funny because he's like uh, my favorite rapper because he he's the one that really got me into like hip hop and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like back in 03 when he dropped uh, Get Rich or Die Trying. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I was playing everywhere. I'm like, yo, who is this? Like, I didn't really understand what he was talking about at the time. I was young and stuff, but like, I'm just, I like the sound and everything. But um, I don't want to look like the dude. <laughs> he likes, do you know if you just, I mean, I, I'm sure you know that, but he likes throwing shots at people. Like, he would just make memes and just throw he's, such a he's, he's a bully. He's a bully. He's a bully, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a bully. But I love, I like him for that because like, he's been a bully since, since in the uh, early 2000s, and he's still a bully now. He's like a mm -hmm. girl still. <laughs> like he would just drop some meme, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> now and now you know why. Now you know why he got shot nine times. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, now you see, this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, but I think outside of that, um, he's another very good uh, businessman, like versatile artist who doesn't just to music obviously with power he really like made a name for himself in the in, in the yeah. television industry television industry yeah he now yeah. has a uh, i think two more shows uh coming out he did he has power he has power goes to uh with two, mm -hmm. uh for life on abc and i think he has another one called black mafia family i don't know what network that's coming out but you know, he's doing all these things, and I keep wondering why he filed for bankruptcy at some point. I don't, I, I, <laughs> I don't really understand um, what he was doing during that time. Like, I'm not, I wasn't like that tuned in to like his business. <laughs> like, but like, somebody told me it was like a business move. Like, yeah, move. yeah, I, I keep telling people that too. I was like, nah, this is a business move because that's what I'm thinking. He's he's smart, you know. Yeah. He's smart. He's very intelligent, and he's also good at self marketing, just like The Rock. Yeah, you know, he does everything. He does water. He does yeah. whatever. Um, he has businesses. He he is a movie producer. So he's he's more intelligent than so many like. And I like people like that. That people yeah. will just see you and overlook you, but then you're making moves. I love people like that. <laughs> like you just come out of nowhere, just say, boom, this is what I'm working on underground. And why people are still like, oh, this is amazing. You're back to work because this thing doesn't stop. You know, you, you just have to, you know, in, 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 in our industry, in the film industry, Mm -hmm. you you're as good as your last project yeah you know so and that this is one of the things they don't tell you in film school that the work doesn't stop if you if you if you produced or you direct or or you directed like an academy award winning movie this year and maybe people say oh you're an academy award winning director this year next year it's only a matter of time before people start saying, okay, yeah, but you don't have any other stuff. Yeah. So the work doesn't stop. So you're only as good as your last project. Yeah. So you have to keep learning. You have to, like you said, keep sharpening your skills. Mm -hmm. You have to keep putting yourself out there. Um, you have to, you have to be, you, you just have, you need to have this great attitude that like makes that magnetizes people, you know, towards you and makes people want to do business with you. Yeah. Makes people want to work with you. Makes people want to just keep creating stuff with you. Yeah, I think, and I like, I like how you're saying like you're only as good as your last project, you know, because that's also a way of being in competition with yourself. How are you gonna, how are you gonna top that? You know, mm -hmm. what do you need to do to get to the next level. You know, because yeah. Like you said you don't want to just be like a, a 15 seconds of fame, like, and then kind of just like, oh, that's all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You always want to continue like bettying yourself. Not many people like. People think like, once you finish school, the learning stops. You know, like I learned all. Mm. Oh man, like life is learning. Like it's a learning process. School is just a start. School is just like the book smart, or whatever. Like life, yeah, all different. Life games. smart is different. <laughs> yeah, really, it's really. a whole different game, honestly. Exactly. So, if we want to reach out to you on social media, how do we reach out to you? 
Um, Instagram is the one uh, social media platform like I'm really uh, I'm active on. That's at Speed Done. Mm-hmm. Speed um, uh, also on Twitter, but like I don't really like I don't really tweeting like that. I do be mm-hmm. stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You don't have TikTok. You know what? I I'm. I'm in the process of making a TikTok. I've had my friend, my girlfriend tell me like, I need to be on there. I need to like, yeah. I, I just haven't had the time to actually sit down and like figure out like what to put yeah. on Yeah. You know? I recently saw a meme from Michael Blackson. I don't know if you know Michael yeah, Blackson. I know him. So he, he released the meme and you know the way he speaks and like mother soccer and all those things. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. like there is no excuse. Like when people say, Oh, I'm waiting for the industry to find me, it was like just go create some TikTok accounts and yeah. just put yourself out there. And no one cares. The moment you get famous on TikTok, that's it. We have so many people back and I, I like to hear your thoughts on this because you know back in the days you have to be with some production company you have to be with hollywood before you become famous yeah nowadays you don't need all those things nowadays you have social media influencer that's what we call them yeah and have tons of followers they probably have like five million followers and then the production company has maybe like five hundred thousand followers so what's the range and how do you think this has changed the acting game or the filming, the film industry over time? When you basically as a talent, you have control over, you have control over, like there are no gatekeepers now. You could just create your content and put it out there and just be who you want to be. How do you think this has changed the game or cost, or at least cost of duration, in the in the movie industry. I think that um, that's one of like I think I was having a conversation about this recently with somebody about like the positive and negatives of like, social media, and I look at that being the positive for like people within our industry. You know, they give uh, that gives you a chance to show what you're about, show what you're capable of doing. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to wait anymore to like make a movie or a TV show and you know that takes time and then after making it, it's going to take another month or two to be released mm-hmm. you know I could literally just come on here take a video of myself do a monologue post it mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. a thousand views and whatnot mm-hmm. out of those a thousand views there could be that one agent manager director casting director who sees it and be like i like this kid you know it okay. gives you in just an easier way to uh show off your skills you know and um it, give, it just allows you to be more in control of what you want to be seen as you know you want how do you want to represent yourself in this game mm-hmm. you know and that could start from like your social media presence you know yeah yeah, that's something that's some, like you said that's some, some, something i'm trying to work on with the TikTok. like yeah um but for me i feel like there's this huge distinction between social media actors and real actors oh yeah you know um whereby say for example there's this huge social media influencer called the scene the scene I don't know if you've heard about her. She is um she's all over YouTube. She has videos, her videos has like 20 million views and she does skits on YouTube. She has millions of views. Lily Singh. Comedian? Yeah, she's a comedian and she has her own show. I'm gonna show right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean we can't see her face, but that's what I'm talking about. So she said something. And she said, even though she's well known, she has millions of followers on Instagram, she has millions of subscribers on YouTube, millions of followers on Facebook. She said she would still go for film audition and she wouldn't be called back. Yeah. That she 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 has gone for so many auditions, so many roles, 
and she doesn't get the roles. And it made me realize that at some point, you could be internet famous and you could be so good at making skits, but when it comes to professional acting, yeah, there are some things that directors look for. There are some things that casting directors look for, that producers look for, that it's it's intricately different from what what you see online. Yeah, you know. So for me, I think there should still be this distinction between professional actors and social media skits. I skit think. Makers. Yeah, yeah, I think um like social media, like and like what you're saying, a lot of people associate a hundred million followers as being famous now. Like ah, mm -hmm. like, boom, I'm Kanye now. Like mm -hmm. I'm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like you said, in reality, it's just like there is a difference. There is a difference between like those people like doing skits. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram and whatnot versus like the professional actors trying to make it in the industry, you know, and like I've had I I feel like I feel like that's why I'm just kind of so like hesitant sometimes to like do like TikTok and things like mm -hmm. that. Like I don't want to just be like seen like seen as just like uh another Instagram like actor and things like that. You know, I'm trying mm -hmm. to like get the big leagues and whatnot. You know, um it's, it's like it's like it's like it's like um there's like two sides to it mm -hmm. you know like there's a good side there's a positive side and a negative side like there's people who want to be like known like instagram famous and whatnot that's cool and all that mm -hmm. but then there's people like me who are just like no i want to be like on the big screen and be on like the tv and like movies you know mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah there's like there's like a distinctive uh a distinction between them so I'm going to give you five actors, top five actors, and I would like you to tell me what you think about them. I'm gonna give you an actor. You could describe them in 30 seconds or what you like, what you like about them and what you see about their acting and what you always look for. Okay. In their acting. All right. You know what, just freestyle, okay? Nothing. And if you don't know the name, if I give you a name and you don't know anything about them, just say next. Okay. Okay, so let's start with your favorite. Denzel. Oh, man. <laughs> there's too many, yeah, there's too many things to say about you, man. Like, oh my God, composed, intellectual, um, motivated, like just knows how to like take over the scene. Um, what I look for in him is just like how he, how he's able to, again just take over the scene like make that his make that him like make all eyes on him um robert downey jr oh he's I, I i love him he's like somebody who is very versatile he's um also an intelligent actor i feel like um he he knows how to turn it on and off he knows what to do in the room and in person, you know what I mean? He, he knows how to defend himself. Yeah, he knows how to be the Iron Man, man. I love Iron, Iron Man. Man. Like when it comes yeah. like this, like just break all the rules. I love people that just break all the rules. Yeah. <laughs> like when I just see someone that's just like, F the rules, I'm not conforming. I'm just like, that's the guy. Yeah. I, because it's so many rules these days and you have to be you have to be almost like 200% of yourself to be able to adopt to so many things, you know. Um, but the next name, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, natural. Um, I don't, I, I feel like he's one of those people who like, he doesn't have to try as hard. He tries hard, but it's like, it, I think it just comes more natural for him and just like, He's just talented, you know. He's just—I just feel like he's like he knows what to do. Another versatile actor, um, yeah. Will Smith. <laughs> very, very charismatic. Another people person. Um, he's he, from my, when I look at him, I look at him like he attacks every role with like 
like with a positive attitude. He's one of the most optimistic people I know. Will Smith is, he has this high energy. Like if you look at him, if you're watching me in the Fresh Prince, yeah. and you go watch like his videos on Instagram right now, he's yeah. like 53 something. It's still the it's same still the high same. energy. Yeah. Like, bro, what you doing, man? I want to be on whatever you're on. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly what I'm saying, man. I'm just... All right, uh, Kevin Hart. Funny, like you just like. I think he's he's another person who knows how to market himself well, and like, he knows mm -hmm. how to sell himself, and he knows what he's right for. Johnny Depp. One of my favorites, man. That's another actor I look up to. Who's very versatile. Who like. I think he's somebody who knows how to embody characters. I look at what he does. I actually watched um, one of his younger, his older movies when he was with Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, was eating Gilbert Grape. And they're both like pretty young. And I'm just like, wow, like seeing how they're starting to see them now is just like uh, an amazing moment. Okay, top five actresses now. Okay. Meryl Streep. Go, you know, somebody who is just like demands like the attention, who just knows and knows how to take it. Um, somebody who just really like studies the game and just knows how to. Just, she just she just knows how to act, you know. Scarlett Johansson. She's uh, I like her. She's cool. Um, I think she's somebody who's um. She has a few versatile roles, I think. Yeah. But she's kind of like the in The funny thing about Scarlett Johansson was I saw a, uh, one of our old films mm -hmm. and I felt like her new role in, 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 in with Marvel just kind of took out her being dynamic. Yeah. And, and I don't know, maybe it's just me. Like, I feel like once she becomes so successful as an actor or as an actress yeah you you tend to want people like you for something right exactly. and now every movie brings you in for that thing and now we've seen so much of it that you 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 lose your versatility so for example let's say the rock personally i feel like the rock is bored i'm just being honest with you because yeah. he has done so many movies that involves this huge guy, muscle, the balls, action. muscles, testosterone, like, yeah. boom, you know? This is what, when I saw The Rock in Fast Five with Vin Diesel, I was like, ooh, I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be in between these two guys fight. I don't know if you've seen Fast Five, Fast and Furious. Yeah, I saw when they were fighting. Fights. I was like, oh my God. That was like the first time you'll see like, maybe, I don't know if that's the first time, but almost the first time. I mean, for me, it was the first time I saw like two people like that, Vin Diesel and Biro going head to head. And, yeah. you know, you like you pick someone up and you're breaking through concrete and walls. And one yeah. of the comments is like, when they ask the director, how much walls are we breaking? They're like, everything. Like they were just breaking through walls with their body. They were like, oh my God. And that was the first time I was going to see The Rock. And then he was like in G.I. Joe Part 2. And mm -hmm. then he started doing all this muscle film, and now he has done so much of it, and no Academy Award, and he's been doing it over and over and over again. So I feel like now he's bored as an actor because, and I like the effort he's putting into Black Adam because I see him um, on daily basis working on himself towards mm -hmm. the role of the Black Adam, his workout routine, his acting routine, you yeah. know walking with the casting and everything um i think he's um he's is at a space where he wants something bigger than just lots of balls lots of muscles sweaty yeah high testosterone thing i think he wants something dynamic but unfortunately it's it's a money-making business and this it's is why hard. people love you so you, you gotta do this thing <laughs> yeah that's what I, yeah i would say the same thing about the rock um i think he's just like he plays the same roles he, he plays himself and i could say the same thing about kevin hart 
Kevin Hart really yeah. plays himself in everything. He's always going to be the comical character. And that is what happened to Scarlett Johansson. Like I said, I saw her yeah. old film and I was like, whoa, she is great. But now when I say in Marvels, you know, Black Widow and um, this lady, like she can fight Hawk, she can do all those things. And yeah. like, there's no more dynamic. Now we just know that you can you can you can kill a lion with your bare hands. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I think the black widow uh, black widow role overshadow overshadows her like recent roles, you know, because like you said, yeah. you look like you think Black Widow, but she, I know she had marriage story. Um yeah. so I think it's Jojo's Rabbit, something. Like mm-hmm. those were two roles she played that were very different from Black Widow, mm-hmm. but it's kind of just like nobody's like really talk. When you think of talking about Scarlett Johansson, you don't really talk about that. You know, yeah. she, I remember her from being in Don John. Mm-hmm. Stuff, and like people forget that too. And I'm just like, okay, actress number three, Viola Davis. Oh my god! Oh my god! Amazing! Like if I want to, if I want crying lessons, I'm going to her. <laughs> crying and salivating lessons yo i've seen i think no i no I, I have to respect her i have to respect her a lot because of her role and in how to get away with murder mm-hmm. her character in that show was just went through hell like 10 t- times over and for her to like take on all those dark things the character had to do and portray it so well takes another level of just like skill and i'm just like wow yeah she is she brings a lot to the table when it comes to act yeah like you could just i can't imagine working with someone like that with that i feel like and that's just being a young director it would be really challenging to like push her to a limit because you don't even know how much she could deliver. Exactly. You know, she's someone that if you ask her to like, oh, we just want you to cry on this set, she could do more than just crying, but then you are just telling her to cry. So you don't know how to, so someone like that, I would just step back and be like, okay. Yeah. Just do your thing. Yeah. You know, um, and she's the kind of person that when she does a thing, everyone in the room, including the cameraman and the makeup and everyone would just be like paused and frozen like, mm-hmm. what did I just see? She's basically like a, like a, like a magician. She could evoke, <laughs> you know, some type of emotion on you. Halle Berry. Uh, I love her. I think she's, um, I think she's a really good actress too. Um, She's played a number of roles as well, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Different, different characters. What actually, she's also an Academy Award winning actress. Yeah, yeah. No, I got, I got to respect her too. You yeah, know, she be like, fun, like doing the work. Yeah, yeah. She was a fun girl. She, um, she did. Um, she worked with Spike Lee. Yeah. It was an old movie, and she did um, Losing Isaiah. Uh, yeah, she did a lot of. And she's also very dynamic. And I think she's still dynamic. Um, she doesn't have this peak effect <laughs> of actors and actresses. I think she's still very dynamic. And I think it's because we don't see much of her on screen. So when you see her on screen, it's uh, it's always uh, it's always refreshing. Yeah. Angelina Jolie. She's dope too. I um I was just watching a clip. She's magic, man. Um, She's fire. Mr. Smith? You seen yeah. that? Yeah, Mr. And Mrs. Smith. Now, I think that was one, one of her more fun roles, you know? Yeah. She know. I think she knows how to, like, range herself from just, like, playing those, like, playful to serious and then mix mm-hmm. it. She knows how to mix it well, you know? Angela Bassett. No, they go. Like another, <laughs> like, just like work hard. She's one of the hardest workers, act, actresses as well. Um, I saw, I think the last movie I saw her, and I could be lying, or the one that I think about right now is a movie called uh, I think Motherhood or Otherhood or something like that, where she like plays her and a group of other moms that are like 
20, 30 some year old souls and trying to get back into their lives and whatnot. And I think she just really like, she was, what I liked about that role was just like, she know how to blend like the emotional supportive mm -hmm. mom to like her being her own pus her person as a woman, you know, mm -hmm. even though I'm a mom, I'm still like me. I'm still have my own things I'm going through, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and obviously in Black Panther, like she killed it. Amen. Yeah. What's your favorite Denzel film ever? American Gangster. You said it before. You said it before. How about Malcolm it. X? I love Malcolm X too, but I think whenever he portrayed Frank Lucas in American Gangster, mm -hmm. that was just one of those roles that was very composed, very like, it, it could be the story as well. That definitely is a story as well. Yeah, the story. I'm a fan of like gangster movies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But like, he was different. You remember that scene with like Idris? Yeah, uh, in the market. Yeah, oh, man, was, that like, is so. Everyone's like, Ooh. <laughs> like, going from like being at breakfast with your family, talking about something serious, and you're like, looking outside at Idris the whole time, and he gets up and does his thing. I'm just mm -hmm. like, All right, yeah, he's really like in the moment in like he just knows how to be there and just keep him right. posed and like yeah i don't know i just love, i just love that role in. yeah i think he, he he brought that same character as well into malcolm x that's yeah switching from zero to a hundred yeah yeah he, he it's just like that he's a very dynamic actor um it's just how, what do you think about him acting in equalizer I like um I liked it. Uh the story was cool. Um I think I think he know again that's another role where he just knows how to be composed but like mm -hmm. a killer at the mm -hmm. same time like you know he cause I don't think once in either movie he really like got like hyped up. Mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, he was always kind of just like yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Even mm -hmm. when he was like fighting, he was just mm -hmm. kind of getting composed and knows mm -hmm. how to present himself. You know, he's really good at that. Yeah, the Equalizer film, I, I always love the Equalizer film. I love the beginning, but I always the ending is always like, damn, this guy just he just took everyone out. Like, no, like there wasn't like a body opponent for him. He just took everyone out so easily. But mm -hmm. the, that's how they won their movie. Okay, now because you said you just love gangster movie, give me your three favorite gangster movie of all time. Number one is Scarface. Scarface. Um, number two would probably be American Gangster. American Gangster. And then Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Yeah. Where is the Godfather? That's it's like it's probably like right below that. That's like number seven. <laughs> no, 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 four. It's probably number like four. Four. Okay. that's Godfather two. I'd say Godfather two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I saw Godfather one, two, three. I love one. Two was awesome. Three, oh, maybe like sixty percent, something like yeah. that. I felt like they just yeah. went like give it like a closing sort of like that. So they yeah. just had to close it out. But it's all, I mean, it's all good. Do you have a favorite quote from, let's say, Denzel? I would usually ask your favorite quote of all time, but because... No, I got I got one. Um, I got a, it's actually on my website. I, got a, I just, I don't know <laughs> how far. I'm about to tell you right now, though. It's, um, all right, here it is. I say luck is when an opportunity comes along and you're prepared for it. You know, like how yeah. I was saying, just like, uh, or how like we talked about me being prepared for my uh, audition and the call. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff. That's what luck is. Like you see the opportunity, you're all prepared, you know? It's not some miracle happening along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe in miracles, but <laughs> yeah, I believe in miracles. Believe you 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 increase your chances of allowing the miracle happen when you yeah. prepare. <laughs> like not like, like I'm like I'm I'm like I trust in God. You know, mm -hmm. I let God like lead me the way and whatnot. At the same time, 
That's fifty percent. I got to do the other fifty percent. Without work is nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to have the faith in God, but they got to put in the work too. I can sit here and pray and manifest all day, but what am I doing myself to, to progress that? You know. Yeah. Word up, word up. You told us the impact you would like to have on the movie industry. Now, what impact would you like to have in the world in general? Um, I want to say the same thing. You know, I think I really just want like. To inspire people. Believe, yeah, just like believe in something and just like don't let your situation like hold you back. You know, um, I think people, because I think we live in a world where it's just like if you don't have anything you're going for, then you're nothing. You know, but it's like you don't have to be that way forever. You know, like like I, I said earlier, like age doesn't matter. You know, as long as like you see something you're inspired by from like somebody you know on screen, and you're from music. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. that I want to be that. Where just like I can inspire somebody I never meet in my life in the most different and the most crazy part of the world. You know, like just from what they see of me. Thank you so much, Spencer. Uh, you have an amazing story. And I believe deep in my heart that beyond the sky is your limit because of the fact that you're very decisive, you're very reliable. And I'm just saying, I don't say this about anyone. Like, I don't, well, I, I'm just like that. But you have, you, you've shown, you've proven yourself beyond words. You know, you've proven yourself complex number of times um i don't even want to i wouldn't even describe you as an actor i would describe you as a reliable human being yeah. and i'm just putting this out there for whomever it is that is walking with you like hold on to this dude <laughs> just hold on to this dude okay um and also i wouldn't be surprised if i see you top in the chat and becoming one of the highest paid actors in the nearest future but until then, I just want to thank you for being a guest on my show, on my channel. And I believe the audience has learned so much from you. So Spencer, thank you. And also, there's a link to his website. Go check out his website. Go check out his social media. Go check out um, his Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'm, I'm sure he's going to be coming on TikTok very soon. Mm. Connect with him. Learn from him. Do, look, ask him a question. When you have talents like this at your disposal, just get your get the best from them. Okay, guys? Um, and until next time, remember to always be your best self. So.